everybody. Thanks for joining me for another One Man to Review. Today we'll be looking at Bark Bark Girl by Michael Furler. This is, I believe, newly re-released from Piao Studios. I'm really happy that Piao's still doing some stuff. I thought they were closing shop, but it seems like they're going back and reprinting some of their more popular books. I don't know if they'll be doing any new books, though. I, I'm pretty sure they did close shop. Really, really what drew me to it is the art on the cover. Really enjoy this like uh, shape and color-based style here. And then when I got the book, even more so enjoyed the back cover where you're seeing the front cover from the other angle and you've got the dog's butt with the <laughs> with the uh, barcode over the dog's little butthole there. I thought that was really, really funny. The book is very visually inventive all the way throughout, uh, particularly at the beginning of the book. There's a lot of fun formalisms. You get every day uh, put out here with like a little comic strip and you get introduced to the, the main character here right away. This is uh, Yola, I believe is how you pronounce the name, even though it's spelled Jola. But uh, Jola's walking around, or Yola's walking around town with her dog. Uh, real fun formalism here where there's the like phone icon of the bell ringing related to the church and then, and, uh, and you see like these little like noise lines kind of everywhere. And then on the next, page as Yola gets further out of town where all that noise is left uh, you see that same icon applied to her phone and so I think that's just a fun little way of, even though we all know what that means it's a fun little way of training the audience and giving a lot of information in a short space there are also these fun insertions of comics within comics so here uh, she's being asked like how's your comic today by her mother and um you know, you get to see the comic that she's reading. She's like, it's not that funny. You also learn that mom's a, a painter, so an artist herself. And then we get this really wild thing that looks like it's done on a computer, which doesn't make so much sense at first, but throughout the course of the book, you start to learn what this computerized aesthetic is all about, and we'll we'll talk when we get there. So Yola is uh, has now lost her dog, Kuma, and that's pretty much the story of the book is she keeps losing her dog. She's also trying to t uh, pass a math test. And um, that's she's oftentimes using the lost dog as an excuse to delay the math test. This fun little formal sequence here where the signs are being used as part of the dialogue. Uh, so she says, fucking prick, doing an 80 in a 50. And having the visual as part of the dialogue that lets the character move forward in space, like here they're out and here she's obviously coming back into town. Um, it's, it's telling time while also being part of the dialogue. And I think that's a really, really cool formal trick. You find out that Yola is making a comic called Tomato Chan. And Tomato Chan is something that she does for herself with a mouse. And that's why you get this really kind of crappy like rudimentary drawing with this mouse in a lot of the uh, more emotional points of the book like her interior state is being expressed through that style as well so that's a really really clever thing because when I first started flipping through this book I saw these really great moments of cartooning like this like here again you, you see the mom with Kuma working on a painting the mom has a painting show that's that's coming up that's uh, you know she's working on the last piece for it um, so really great cartoon throughout here and then you'll get those like really crappy moments that look like they are done with the mouse and it's like what the heck but but the fact that the story justifies that's really cool also like what's typical with piao books is you'll get spot colors so this one's in the black and this this green they always have like two or three spot colors in the book the third kind of main character here is um yola's friend maddie and again, really beautiful cartooning here, dropping the edge out using the dot tones and all that. I really like that. But Maddie is helping Yola uh, study for this math test. So I don't want to give away much more of the book than that since it's newly back out. I would definitely encourage everyone to go buy it. But a couple other things point out that I think are really nice. Really like this page where Yola is in her head thinking in her cartoon style and then mapping that over all of her math studying that's very much what all of my notes looked like in school. There was more drawing than anything else. 
uh, helped me pay attention, but I always got in trouble for it. But like here where she's using the, the form of the grid that she's mapping out and they haven't put a SS fuck this on it, I think is really, really funny. At the end of the book, there's some cool stuff. Normally, Piao does this where they they show you what colors, you know, printed in regular K, regular black, and, and this uranium green. But also, the artist, Michael Furler, has put in, these are the tone patterns that he used throughout it. And having the screenshot of it, I think, is pretty cool. Particularly because this book is also about someone who makes stuff digitally. So recognizing those digital tools, the talking about this paint program, Michi Paint, that he uses that I guess really isn't the best thing to be using for this book, but works for him for some reason. Um, so showing all of that and especially considering the tones as part of like what tools do you use, I think that's really fun. It, it, and having that in combination with the typical Piao where they tell you what colors they used. I like that kind of modernist approach of like, we'll, we'll show you how the, the stew is made. And uh, that, that's pretty cool. And then talking about the different pins that were being used throughout the book as well. So really cool kind of different process notes in the back. And a, just a really fun story that is very visually playful with some really great cartooning. Some moments like the hand that are a little bit clunkier, but overall some really, really great cartooning throughout. And yeah, a pretty down to earth story about someone struggling through school is something I think a lot of people can uh, relate to. So highly recommend this. It's It's been reprinted. I don't know how many copies they make. So if you have not got this yet, definitely head over to Piao and grab one now.